go on to the school's website and look for streaming videos and pictures. Eladio, why is tonight's game important? Well, I mean, if we're talking about importance, it's it's important to both teams. But if you if you're Hannah, you need a win and get into the playoffs. Uh, Destiny is pretty much in their hands right now, and if they can pull off an upset here, uh, it would be a huge upset. It would definitely uh, propel the, the Hannah Eagles back into the playoffs for the first time since I believe 08 or 09. So it, it, it's big for them. Harden's is just trying to uh, finish off the season and, and get that outright district title. So uh, a loss for them, they would have to share it with South if they would pull off the win against Los Fresnos tonight. So, you know, they don't want any of that. So, you know, Harnigan, uh Manny Gomez's teams are going to be out here ready to play. And, and, and that, that, that's what they're here for, trying to, to finish off the regular season on a high note. Yeah, I think... The Harden High School Cardinals, they're going to come out ready to play. Coach Gomez always has his guys prepared. But Coach Medrano, I'm sure, has been preaching to his guys. They still have a chance to control their own destiny if they can get a win tonight. So it'll be a huge game for them. Again, you said it's been a long time since they've been into the playoffs. And so this gives them life tonight. Um, we'll see how long it takes for Harden Cardinals to try to jump on them. Or maybe we'll see Bronzo take an early lead. Yeah, you mentioned Coach Medrano. He's a veteran. He's coached against Harrington many times, and, and he coached for the Harrington Cardinals back in the 90s. He was on this coaching staff, so he's definitely got his team well prepared. It's up to them to get on the field and see what they can do. Yeah, right, and we will have the Harrington Cardinals. They'll come out with the offense to start off the game as they're already lined up tonight. It's a beautiful day over here in Bogus Stadium. The weather is a little chilly, but not real chilly, so it's a, just a great day to go out there and be on the field for these young men. And so they're going to have a great time tonight playing. It's the best time of the year, John. I mean, it, it's cold. It's week 10. Playoffs are just around the corner. So it's about as good as it gets. You know, it really is, especially counting down, closing the season right now, and the team's looking forward into the playoffs. And they're all, you know, Hannah, they're, they're fighting for their lives tonight. And so we'll see how much of a fight they can put up because they really want to get into the playoffs. And I'll tell you who's watching this game closely, too, is Bronzo Rivera. They beat Lopez yesterday, so... Uh, with a Hannah loss, Rivera gets in the playoffs. And Andres Lopez kicks the ball, and he gets it down to the five-yard line. And it's bounced off of the runner's head as number 28 for the Harmsing Cardinals. That'll be Yellerson Castillo takes it down close to the 30, about the 27-yard line. And the Harmsing Cardinals, they'll be prepared to come out on offense. They will have the ball out at the 27-yard line. The defense is already set for the Hannah Eagles. And here comes the offense for the Cardinals. The offense for the Cardinals is led by their quarterback who played really great last week. Brandon Garza will be leading them. And he's in the shotgun formation. He has one running back left, two receivers to the right side. Checks to the sideline looking at his coaches for the, the play call. The defense is running three linemen down, four linemen up, four linebackers up. He looks right, as does Garza, and he gets the ball out for about a 10-yard Quick shot to the right side. And that's number 11, Mark Rosales, uh, senior. A lot of experience uh, on varsity, and he's having a big year for the Cardinals, too. Yeah, Rosales has had a big year this year, and he is one of Garza's favorite targets. Look for him tonight, as well as several of the other receivers, to make plays. Now, now we have Garza in the shotgun. He has three receivers to the left. His running back to the left as well, one spread right. It'll be a quick handoff to the left side. But number 45 for the Hannah Eagles gets a lot of penetration as Jay Ramos for the Hannah Eagles brings him down for a, about a no gain. You know, when you, when you talk about Harnsen's running game, there's not one guy that, that, that sticks out, but it, it's always been like a stable of backs that they've had back there to, to run. Yeah, they've been using a lot of different running backs. So far this game, they start off with Fidencio Garza in the backfield as Garza's in the backfield. He has Garza to his right side, and he has two receivers on the left. He drops back. He looks quickly to the left, and he hits his receiver number 11 again. That is Mark Rosales for another about eight-yard gain on the play. Sets up a third and four. For the Harns and Cardinals here near midfield. It'll be third and three. We have Gatsa lined up in the shotgun. His running back is behind him this time. Two tight receivers left. Two tight receivers on the right side. Number 12, Powers goes in motion. He gets the ball, hands it off quickly to the right side. 
and he's off to the races running around the edge and he will get the first down he's dragged out of bounds after about an eight yard gain on the play getting them the first down off the right side that was a nice run there by uh by frito you know being led by uh bowie davis number 12 And just like you said earlier, they use a lot of different running backs, and we already have a substitution. Robert Davila comes into the play now as we watch the replay as Fidencio Gonzalez gets taken out of bounds. Got the shotgun. He looks to the sideline to see what the coaches are calling out for him. He has two receivers left, one receiver right, and he has his running back, Davila, to his right. He drops back, looks deep. He's looking deep. He attacks the middle with a deep ball, hits Powers right in stride, and he will get tackled at the five-yard line between multiple defenders. Oh, it's Bowie Davis. I'm Bowie sorry. Davis. Sorry. You're, you're Davis. a couple of years behind. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that was a great catch by Bowie, and, uh, you know, that, that's the type of kid he is. He's very athletic. He's not afraid to get hit up the middle, and, and he makes catches like that. He can make catches like that for 100 all day. Here we have Garza in the backfield. He has two rece three receivers left. Run receiver comes in motion to the left side. Quick pitch to the left side to the runner. And he has run blockers there, and he takes it into the touchdown. But there, there is a flag. Uh, there is a flag down there at about the 10-yard line, which is where the pulling blockers had stopped. So we'll see what the call is. It looks like it may be a holding call, so it may be brought back. But we'll see what the referees say right now. But some patient running right there by number 20, Robert Davila, as he just, he took the quick pitch and he just watched as his blocking got developed there on the left side. Yeah, that was an illegal, uh, illegal procedure against the Harms and Cardinals, so it's coming back and we're moving, moving back five yards. And so they will be come back five yards. It'll give them first and goal at about the 12 yard line. We have Garza in the backfield. He looks to the coaches on the left side as he has one receiver wide right, two receivers left, and a tight end on the left side, running back on the right side. He gets the ball. He drops back a few steps. He looks left initially. He rolls right. He's looking down. He attacks, and he gets his receiver. It looks like it is number 13, C.J. Gallegos. That was a nice grab by C.J. in the back of the end zone to get up, get the ball, and then had the, the state of mind to, to get his feet inbounds. It was, it was a great catch all around. Yeah, right here at 9 minutes, 56 seconds, the Cardinals get their first touchdown as their quarterback, Brandon Garza, looks deep in the back of the end zone, and he sees his receiver coming open at the last second. Uh, he really had great blocking on, the, on that play, and the kick is up, and it looks good from here right now. We'll see. It is good. And so it'll be 7-0, 9 minutes, 56 seconds left. The Cardinals' first drive finishes with a touchdown as they took it down the field using a little bit of run and then some pass to closing it out. A big pass down thrown into the red zone, and that was caught by Bowie Davis as Garza connected with him on a pretty pass down the middle. And then he closes it out with his other receiver, C.J. Gallegos, really reaching for it. That was a really pretty pass, Eladio. What did you think about that drive, Eladio? Uh, it was about as good as drive as Orange has had all year, and... It's indicative of what, they, what type of offense they've had. They they run a little, and but they're mostly a passing team, and you saw it with the big pass plays uh, to Bowie and then, and then the big touchdown to uh, to CJ there. But a couple of short pass plays uh, at the beginning of the drive to Marco Rosales kind of got got the, got the ball rolling there at the beginning. So everybody getting their hands on the ball here early and uh, ho hopefully setting, setting something up good for Harnsen to finish off strong this regular season. And those was a really well-balanced drive as they used a little bit of the run game. They did some short passes. They hit them deep once. They used a so couple of backs, like we said. They don't have the one premier back. They used, they used uh, uh, two backs there. And the ball goes back, and it looks like number 15 will not take it out. He will take the touch back. So the Hannah Eagles and their offense will start off at the 25-yard line. And we'll see what they're able to do against a very strong Cardinals and Cardinals defense. And so we'll see what Coach Medrano has drawn up for them on this first drive. And you know, the, the Harnes and defense really got tested last week against Harnes and South, very good Harnes and South team. And uh, you know that after giving up those 14 points in the second half, they want to come out here and they're thinking shutout. You know, it's a Manny Gomez team, they're thinking shutout. So they're going to play hard every play. They're going to get after it. And, uh, and we'll see here from the get-go what we got. <clears throat> the 
It looks like the referees are discussing something with the coach, and so we'll see what they will be discussing. I, and, you know, I, I I saw that. I don't know if we have a replay of that. It looked like he stepped out, then he stepped back into the end zone. I thought he had stepped out at least into the one-yard line, mm -hmm. and that might be what, they, what they're calling. Well, it is. looks like that will be the official call as they are setting up to kick at do the Hannah Eagles. So big mistake early on. Um, they were going to show us their first time on the offense, but mistake done, and so they will be charged to safety. So the score is 9-0 to zero with 9 minutes 52 seconds. 53 seconds left in the game, and the Hannah Eagles will be kicking off once again to the heart of the Cardinals because of the safety again. The ball was caught. It looked like about the one-yard line. Um, he was bobbling a little bit. I think he took it into the end zone, but the referees do call it as an official safety, and so Harlingen gets a break and a big mistake there by the Hannah Eagles. Yeah, and again, you know, if you're looking to come in here and pull off the upset, you don't want to give it the touchdown. You definitely don't want to have a mistake like that. So. Yellerson Castillo gets the kick. He takes it to the left side. He has some nice blocking up ahead of him. He is up in the open field, and then he gets dragged down hard at the 40-yard line by number 12 of the Hannah Eagles, and that is Richard Martinez. Again, here we see on the replay, he takes it to the left side. He has some nice blocking, really free running up until he gets grabbed by... Martinez there and he's dragged down hard but great field position for the Harlingen Cardinals as they get it at the 40 yard line going in already and you know someone like Yellerson Castillo great speed something you can't coach but what people need to remember and sometimes forget I think is that this is his first year playing football so he doesn't have that you know a lot of these kids whether they're big small or uh, they've been playing football their whole lives and this is his first go ahead at this and here we see run right to the right side as we see him, Fidencio, he takes it and he reverses and goes all the way left. He has some room, but he is drugged down by number 33 of the Hannah Eagles. That is Alex Robles, but beautiful play. They did change it up a little bit. Normally, Garthas in the shotgun. That time he goes under center, has a quick handoff to the right side. He has some great blocking. At about eight yards into the run, he decides to reverse field, and he gets himself about another five yards. So about 13 yards total, and it will be a first down. That is a first down. I mean, you're looking at about a 10-yard run, but if you count his zigzagging, it's probably about 25. <laughs> yeah. And here, Garza is again under the center. He has three receivers to the left side. He drops back. Play action. He looks deep, and he has Vasquez up, and he catches the ball, but it looks like he, he does fall in for a touchdown. He was falling pretty close as he was falling after the catch, but he does get called in for a touchdown. He was wide open off the left side after the play action. And another one of those receivers, we already saw Mark Rosales, we saw uh, Bowie Davis, we saw C.J. Gagos, and now we have here Brandon Vasquez with a great catch and a great pass play and, and another score for the Harms and Cardinals. And there's still a couple of receivers that, that Manny can use out there at, 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 at any point. So it, it, that's more or less what the Harms and offense is this year. You know, we're, we're going to run when we have to, but we're going to try to kill you with that pass play, and if we can, with the long pass play. Yeah, they, so far tonight, it looks like they've been pretty much able to do what they wanted to on offense. Again, a big mistake gives them the other two points. And so we now have 16 to 0. Nine minutes, nine seconds left as a quick drive goes down the field as they quickly attack deep left side. And he does connect with one of his favorite targets, Brandon Vasquez, number one of the Harlingen Cardinals. I was a little surprised that he didn't use him at all in the first drive, but he uses him on a big play here in the second drive and he gets himself a touchdown as Garza now has two scoring touchdown throws on the night. Only minutes. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. That was a little bit of a scare. But the <laughs> Barnes and Cardinals, they are out there ready to kick off now. And so I'm sure the coaches have talked to these kickers. I don't know if they're going to touch back no matter what on this one because of the I, mistake that happened. I was probably, if it's getting close to the inside of the tent, just let it roll in. But we'll, we'll see what they do now. Number 85 of the Harlingen Cardinals does get the kick, he, Samuel Bassan, and it does go to the left side. And here we have some nice blocking up front as number 15 of the Hannah Eagles does get marked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. But he had some nice blocking there off the right side. They do call him out of bounds, though, before he does get tackled. And that was Lucas Olivares returning it there. 
And here we have number one, Andres Lopez, coming in with the play off the sideline as everyone else is ready in the huddle. And we'll see what they come out with against the Harlingen Cardinal defense that was able to keep a very strong offense of Harlingen South down to 14 points last week, even though they would have liked to have shut them out. Um, we have shotgun running back to the right side, two receivers left and right, spread wide. The ball is snapped, and it's a run play down the middle as number 34 takes it up the middle. And that is Travis Rainier as he takes it up for about a three-yard gain, a, a strong two-yard gain. Eladio, tell me about what the defense of the Harms and Cardinals, they typically do against teams in the spread. Uh, they're going to rush the quarterback, man. They're going to, they're going to. Manny's going to get aggressive there in the box, and, and we saw that last week when, when they put that pressure on Sean in, in the backfield. Uh, Manny's not going to be afraid to bring the house, and, and you know, he's going to say, beat me, and, and I'm going to try to beat you with, with my with my guys. Here we have it. He has a receiver that does beat his guy on that one, as we had two receivers left, two receivers right in the shotgun. He drops back and looks right. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage as number 12. Richard Martinez, he beats number four for Harlem Cardinals, Hayden Flores, in the one-on-one -on -one coverage. A nice throw right there. Good executed play right there, Eladio. Yeah, it was. And the quarterback put it right where only the, quarter, the, the receiver was going to catch it. He had to come back. But like you said, Hayden kind of overrun the play. He has Greener in the backfield with him, two receivers on each side again in shotgun and he hands off to the left side but he is met quickly by number 24 that is Ray Moreno on the tackle for no gain no gain maybe even half a yard loss yeah it's tough for Hannah you know come coming in here hoping for the upset and the first time the offense steps on the field they're already down 16 points yeah they're gonna be playing catch up for the rest of this evening um, as they have two receivers right, two receivers left again. Same formation they've used all night. We have Greener lined up on the left side in shotgun formation. He drops back. Harlingen does come on the blitz, but a well-thrown ball in and out of the hands of number 15, Lucas Olivares. Well-thrown ball. We've seen some nice throws so far out of number one, Andres Lopez of the Han Eagles, but that one is dropped right out. And you got to make those catches, you know, if, 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 again... I don't want to sound like a broken record, but Hannah is he in here fighting for their playoff lives, and, and, and they got to pull off this huge upset down 16 0. You got to make those plays. You got to, you know, if the ball touches your hand, you got to come down with it. And we have Greener on the right side in the shotgun formation. That is Lopez. He has two receivers on each side. He drops back as Moreno does come with some pressure, and the ball is intercepted by number six of the Harms and Carlos. That is Felix Reina, and he's trying to get himself to the end zone. It looks like he will get in as he broke one tackle on the 10 yard line. And the, we'll call it a touchdown, another touchdown for the Harlem and Cardinals. That was a 46-yard uh, touch interception return. There is a flag on the field, however. we got to see what the play call is. This could be brought back. Um, but again, the ball did go out of a receiver's hands on that one. It should have been pretty close to a first down for the Hannah Eagles, but the receiver drops it and goes into the air and into the Cardinals' hands. What was the call there, Lovey? It was an illegal procedure against uh, the Hannah Eagles, and obviously it was declined. Yeah. So it will result in a touchdown. The score is 22-0, waiting for the extra point. It might be 23 in just a second. Seven minutes, nine seconds to go in the first quarter. The Harlingen Cardinals have come out fast. They will not be giving the Hannah Eagles an early shot at trying to get the win tonight. As they come out ready to go, and Coach Gomez typically does have his team ready to go just like this on many occasions. Yeah, and you know I've talked I've talked to Coach Gomez in the past, and he tells me the tough the tough part the toughest part about playing against and you know you don't want to belittle anybody, but it's obviously there's a big gap in competition when you're talking about Harnjen, Harnjen South, and then some of the Brownsville schools. He goes the toughest part is getting these guys to play hard every play. We can't let up and. And they're obviously uh, doing what he preaches, and you got to get after it every play from whistle to whistle. And, and, and then that's really the hardest part, just to, you know, you know it very well as, as, a, as a former athlete to get up for some of these games and, and be able to play in the fourth quarter the way you're playing in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And we have seen it typical of these Harlem Cardinals. They have jumped out on several teams early on. We did see it last week as they did play Harlem South. They took an early lead as they scored three touchdowns early in the game. 
in the first half. But Dan Harmsing South responded last week and put 14 unanswered points up on the board. And then Harmsing was able to close them out. And anybody who's seen both teams play, anybody who's followed them, knew that South wasn't going away after the after that first half. You know, you came out, Lanny changed his shirt, and things were different. <laughs> and things were different in the second half. So, uh, you know, I, it, was, it didn't surprise me to see South come back like that. And very good team. And, and you know, hopefully uh, we can see both of these Harmsing schools uh, make a good run in the playoffs. They're in opposite brackets. One's Division One, one's Division Two. Why not, you know, get a couple of teams there in the fourth, fifth round? But from, unless it's from last week, though, I don't think Manny Gomez is going to let his guys let up at all because he doesn't want to see the other team come back and play a tight game the rest of the way. And so pretty sure he's going to have his guys ready. Nice return right here by number 15. He takes it up to the 28-yard line as Ederson Castillo makes the tackle. But number 15 right there, Lucas Olivares, he made one nice move as he had a defender right on his face at about the 15-yard line. But he does make a cut, and he's able to free himself and follow his blockers before Castillo makes the tackle over at the 28-yard line. And there we see Castillo. You know, uh, Yellerson, he, he got uh, cleared by the UIL after the season had started. He finally got some playing time. Here's a kid who never played football, and he's just out there having fun, man. And that's what, that's what, that's what this is all about. That's what the Cardinals represent. That's what the Hawks represent, just allowing these kids to go out there and have a good time and, and play the sport that they love, they love to play. We have a new formation shotgun still, but three receivers left. And there is some quick pressure as he throws the ball out. And it does get past the, the line of scrimmage. Was he out of the tackle box? It looks like he was out of the tackle box, but he was being chased out. And he had to throw it out of bounds right away. All receivers on the left side, but Coach Gomez came in with a blitz. And it did put enough pressure on him for him to throw it out. And that was a smart play by the Hannah quarterback. It's like you, you just got to throw it away sometimes and, and hope to make up for it in, this, in the next play. Yeah, on that last one, they really brought more guys than could be blocked as there were a free defender coming in off the strong side that he was looking to try to throw. So he quickly had to, to run away from it. And then instead of losing yards, he does get it off. So we have him, three receivers left once again, one receiver right. He has great, he has his running back to the right side and he does hand it off. Ball goes left and it goes up the middle. He has a lot of blocking ahead of him, a lot of open field. He will get the first down after about a 16, 17 yard gain. Uh, there was a huge hole right up the middle. You know, everybody was everybody had dropped back in the secondary, the linebacker. So uh, it was just a misread on on defense, or or, or you know, but the, the running back read it right, and, and he picked up a good good chunk of yards. Yeah, right there we saw there were they had some guys showing up front, real tight up on the box, and then the other people were laid back, and he was able to make a nice cut after some good blocking and just made some nice play. We have three receivers left, one receiver right in the shotgun once again. And he hands it off going the right side. Basically the same play, this time going to the right side. He gets himself three and a half yards. Does Travis Greener. And that is number 44 for the Harms and Cardinals. Isaiah Cano, linebacker, making the play right there on the tackle. And I'm sure the Harms and defense is going to make sure that he doesn't bust another 17-yard run. Yeah, I'm the sure. rest of the night. They were not very happy with that one as they had been playing really well against this run so far tonight. We have three receivers left, one receiver right, Greener on the left side. And we have the Cardinals are showing blitz. They do come with a few guys. The quarterback does decide to throw deep as he was trying to connect with number nine, Ruben Estrada. Uh, but Ruben looks like he stopped a little bit early on the plays. It was a jump ball in the back about the 20-yard line. Uh, both had a chance to get it but it is a little overthrown because he did they both did stop a little early and neither one is able to get their hands on the ball and he was well covered i think that is that number five or number three down there that that was pretty much all over that that receiver uh it looks like it was number five and so we will give credit for right now to steven gaska on the coverage shotgun three receivers left one receiver right. It looks like it'll be a run play to the left side. He does have a free blocker in front of him, but he decides to take it on the outside um, after trying to run patiently, but he does eventually go left. Um, I thought he could have run it down the middle and gotten more yards, but he is tackled, and he's a little slow to get up, but he does get up on his own strength. It'll be fourth down and about six yards to go. Here we have, uh, you know, again, Hannah being forced to punt. Unless they got something up their sleeves here, but you never know. But being forced to punt, obviously not the situation you want to be put in if you're the, the Eagles and Coach Medrano, but their defense is going to have to step up and, and at least come up with a stop on this next drive. 
Well, we have seen a very aggressive Cardinals punt block team in the past, but this game, I think their punter is their quarterback, so I don't know how aggressive Coach Gomez wants to play. He does play it safe on that one. They will, the Cardinals, Cardinals offense will get the ball at about the 22, or the, I'm sorry, the 17 yard line. Um, we've seen them go down the field so far, and so Harns, I mean the Hanna Eagles will have to do something different in order to stop this team as they've been able to really run at will, but really their passing game has been what's been taking them down the field. And they've only had two two drives on uh, two two offensive possessions. You know they they had got a score on that safety and they got a, a score on the pick six. But uh, th th this is their worst field position here so far. So we'll see what if the Hannah Eagles can take advantage of that. They got them deep over here on their own on the 17s and and, and make something happen on on defense. A little bit different formation again, but we see run play to the right side as we've seen several times tonight. This time it only gets them a one yard gain on the play as number 20, a new running back once again, or he's been in there before, but he decides to start. He, Coach Gomez starts him on this drive, does Robert Davila, takes it for the one-yard gain on the right side. We have two receivers wide left, as the ball is on the hash marks on the right side, and they are outside the numbers on the left. We have one receiver outside the numbers on the right, and we have a man in the backfield going in motion to the right side. Gatsa does draw back. He passes it right away to Vasquez. Vasquez does get the ball. He makes a nice play. Makes one nice cut. The ball is loose, but it looks like it was called down before as he was hit down pretty hard and swung down. But he will get the first down. He has about two yards past the first down marker. 12-yard gain on the play. Uh, tell me about that cut right there that he took there. That was a really nice run by Vasquez and what we've seen before from him. It was, and that's just, uh, that's just uh, Coach Fraga, offensive coordinator, using uh, uh, Brandon's speed. He's probably one of the fastest guys on, on the field right now. You, you use his speed in that, in that situation to your advantage. They were in shotgun. Davis does come running off the right side, and he takes, kind of a, he takes a jet sweep coming in motion and then receiving the ball while in motion. And he takes it down for about an eight-yard gain. We did see them use that highly effective last week against the Harness South defense. And we see Davis take it here for a nice gain off the right side before he's pushed out of bounds. Again, Davis is a big kid, man. That guy's it's hard to bring down. Someone like that at running full speed is gonna be it's gonna be tough to tackle. Yeah, Davis is one of the strong, the big strong players. When you see him from the stands, you see that he's a big powerful runner. And we, we saw him make a catch earlier. There we see him on the run. Shotgun formation, two receivers left. He does quickly look to the left, but he thinks he's going to throw to Davis after the fake. Davis does catch it, and he's drug out of bounds after about a 25-yard gain. And this is probably the most they've used Davis all year, and I think we might be seeing something, you know, a little bit taste of the future here uh, for the postseason and next year. Davis is going to be a huge part of this team. Not just this year, but especially next year as a senior, great athlete, like I said, great kid, and uh, we're going to be seeing more of number 12. Yeah, the Harness Cardinals do have a lot of weapons. This time they change formation as they have everyone lined up really tight on the right side. Trips with a blocker in front, kind of a setback. Garza in the shotgun, he has his running back right behind him as well. And as they are in the middle of the field, about the 42-yard line, quick pitch to the right side. Does Davila take it? He has some nice blocks up ahead of him. He takes it around. Great blocking by all the receivers, and then he's drug out of bounds at about the 25-yard line after a gain of about 15. You know, what are you talking about? Brandon Garza and Robert Davila. There's a lot of familiarity there. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows their cousins. They, they live together, and, you know, these guys have known each other for their whole lives practically, so... It, it's one of those things where you go, you go back to, they're just having fun out there. They're just having a good time. Here we have that same formation now on the left side with three receivers tight left and a quick pitch. Same play once again down to Davila. As he follows his blockers, he has some room. He gets down and he gets tackled for it looks like a first down and more as he makes about a 16-yard gain right there on the play. I got him for first and 10 on 13. So it'll be on the 13, 14-yard line, first and 10, as they try to take it into the end zone. We've seen a well-balanced offense so far. Eladio, tell me about what you think is going to happen here on this play. Well, we have been seeing a lot more running, and I'm pretty sure they want to establish that running game. They don't want to just uh, ex uh, use the passing game. So I was going to say, let's look for Davila again. And 
Well, that is the same formation, the same exact play that they've run now three times in a row. Three tight receivers to one side, a lead blocker up and kind of in an off fullback position, and then Davila right behind him. And Davila gets three exact plays. I think he hit 15, 15, and now on that one he got nine. So yeah, yeah, I had him for four, broken, 14, 15, not? nine, and yeah, almost a first down each carry. So let's look, let's look for him again. And same formation now looking to the left side. Let's see if they do it for a fourth time. And the ball is snapped, and we do see the same exact play to the left. It looks like Hannah was a little more prepared as they will bring him down after about a one-yard gain, but it might be a tight for the first down. Uh, he's just short of the first. They do call it short of the first as Robles makes the big play for the... Hannah Eagles on defense. Robles takes him down. Number That is number 33, Alex Robles. And so it'll be third and one. We'll see if they are able to make the stop here. And Did they, they are going to measure it now. Now this offense from the Harlem Cardinals is very, there's so many different weapons that they use. It's a well-balanced team. You know, they mostly attack through the passing game, but they are very capable in the run game. You know, we don't see any one back that has a, a huge amount of yards. But if you look at their unit, Eladio, tell me about what they've been able to do as a unit so far this year. Well, I mean, like you said, the, I think the, the thing that sticks out to me more is, is the fact that they've been playing together. You know, because coming in, especially the past few years when you had Bubba Blake at running back, you knew you had you had a very good back back there, someone that reliable, someone you can count on, someone with speed and power. You didn't have that coming back this year, last year or this year, but last year we saw where they kind of struggled a little. This year you've really seen this team come together as an offensive unit, and nobody's really taking the glory, even though you point at the offense, you think of Brandon Garza, but nobody's really taking that, that glory role, and they're just winning as a team. Well, now we have a it, it was formation. Short. We, it, it was short, so they will call it third and inches as Garza is. He does go under center now after he had been showing shotgun. He takes it himself, and it looks like he will get the first down as he's tackled after about a one-yard gain. And the last week we saw Garza show us his power running ability. We hadn't really seen that this season, but last week we saw a lot of it. Here we see it once again, gaining about a one-yard gain to get the first down here. And we, and we really hadn't seen that uh, that running side of, of Garza. You know, he, he's, he's, he's a big kid. He's, you got to use that size, and we saw it last week. And, and we're, we're going to see more of it uh, come the playoffs if, if, if Harnsen wants to uh, have a good uh, run in, in the postseason. His shotgun, he has Davila in the backfield. He does hand it off to Davila as the line does an excellent job as there were no white jerseys except two yards into the end zone. So easy run for Davila as he takes it right up the middle. And I have to give a shout-out to that offensive line on that one because there was great blocking as Davila did not get touched until he was two yards into the end zone. And, again, that, that, that's just one of those uh, nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to take credit. We've already had uh, three different people score touchdowns and, and, and that safety. So it's it just everybody doing their part on that offensive side of the ball to, uh, to get the job done and to put the points on board. Well, we also have a defensive touchdown in the So yeah. four touchdowns on the board, one safety, extra point is good. One minute, 46 seconds, 30 to zero here in the first quarter as the Harnes and Cardinals do take an early jump on the Hannah Eagles. And we've seen scoring by several different players. Aladi, who are the different players that have scored so far here in the first quarter? Well, we just saw Robert Davila score. We got uh, uh, C.J. Gagos who made that great catch. The back in the end zone, and Brandon Brandon Vasquez, who made the diving catch uh, there at the goal line uh, on a nice pass play, and of course the the interception return was it Felix Reina, number six, who yes, uh, it was Reina, who six. returned that, and and then the safety courtesy of the of the Hannah kick returner. And so a lot of points have been put up on the board here in the first quarter. Great job, a lot of different players being used tonight. Uh, so a great team effort so far here in the first quarter by the Harlem Cardinals. We are looking for the Hannah Eagles to respond as they have. Uh, many fans in attendance here tonight uh, compared to some of the other schools from Brownsville as they cheer on their team here on this beautiful night for football as the weather is almost a perfect situation. Number 85 for the Cardinals. He does get the kickoff. 
That is Bassan, and he gets it down to about the two-yard line as number 15. We've seen him get some nice returns so far tonight, and he will be taken down about the 24-yard line. And that is Lu Lucas Olivares takes it down to the 25-yard line. Here we see on the replay, he does take it left as the blocking was being formed on the left side. He does have some nice blocks ahead until he's finally met by a defender of the Harmony Cardinals, and he is not able to break the tackle. Gets drugged down there at the 25. You'd, you'd think we've been playing all night. It's still the first quarter here. we still got a minute and a half to go, so uh, a good showing so far. That's what I was getting at. A good showing by the Harnsey Cardinals offense and defense. So and it is the way you want to play. You want to play in your last regular season game. Less. You never know. It could be the last home game of the year. You know how the playoffs are going to work out. And they quickly attack them deep. And great coverage there by number four of the Harnsey Cardinals, Hayden Flores is all over a receiver as Andres Lopez tried finding his receiver, number 12, Martinez. We have seen him make some catches so far this game. So Hannah comes out, and they're not ready to call it a game. They attack deep quickly against this Harden Cardinals. He found the one-on-one -on -one coverage, but that time the defensive player was able to win one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and, and the catch you were talking about earlier, which is the only catch Hannah has had, was uh, against uh, Hayden. And, you know, Hayden Hayden's coming off that great game last week with three interceptions. Like it's Harnsey South, so I'm pretty sure he was, he got tested there a little bit. And we do see the run play going on the left side as he looks like he will be getting two and a half yards with the forward progression. And we've seen them use the same running back all night, Travis Greenier, as he's shown some nice runs, some good cutting ability. Um, right there he gets them about two and a half yards off the forward progression. We got third and eight here with a minute nine left in the game. And so far we've seen, you know, he, he's only been able to connect on one play, but Lopez has been able to find a few receivers. They just haven't finished the plays off for him for the most part. Uh, 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 yeah, he's, he's, had, he's had a couple of receivers drop some passes. And, you know, like I say, you got to make those passes. And, and there's another one. And there we see another ball go off the receiver's hand. Um, again, he, he finishes so far in this quarter with only one completion. But he really should have about four or five, and those plays could have extended drives and maybe given him more. Uh, so I don't think Harms and Cardinals can really stop right now at this point because their quarterback of uh, the Hannah Eagles is showing well. He just needs his receivers to step up a little bit. Yeah, and, that, and that's what, you know, Coach Medellano's probably telling him. I mean, you're right. They, he, Harms and can't take the, the, the foot off that gas pedal on defense. they got to keep playing hard. they got to keep attacking the ball. Andres does a night give a nice punt as Vasquez, or I mean, I'm sorry, number seven, Ramirez of the Harden Cardinals is waiting for. He gets drugged down after about four yards. Tough four yards that he had to gain there on the punt return. Again, we, we've seen the Harden Cardinals play very aggressively on punts so far this year. They've gotten very close to blocking a ton of them. They have blocked several, but this time, I think with the quarterback play, of the Hannah Eagles and the quarterback being the punter, we are not seeing the pressure that we normally see out of the Harlem Cardinals punt team. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're down 30-0, you know, you, you, you're, you're in that situation where you're, you're fighting for your playoff lives. You're going to try anything. you got your quarterback back there. You, you don't want to give him that chance to, to beat you like that. Here we have Garza. He is back in the shotgun. He does go forward telling the team to play. He has two receivers right, two receivers left. Running back on the right side. He does dump it off quickly down to the left side as Mark Rosales does make the catch. And he does get himself about five, six yards on the play. Um, we've seen them use that play a couple times. Zeladio, what does the Hannah Eagles need to do to stop that play? I, I don't know. they got to tackle. That's what they got to do. I mean, uh, you know, one of the, a play like that is very well drawn, very well, uh, very effective because because of the receiver they're throwing to. Mark Rosales, very experienced, not a big guy, but... A very strong guy for his size. And there we see Fidencio Gonzalez takes it on the run after, from the shotgun. He has to make a quick cut as one Hannah Eagle did get some penetration on the play. Um, he's basically tackled for a no gain after making that cut. And we do see another running back as Yellison Castillo comes in for the first time at running back. Garza waiting for the play call. Or they're waiting for the first quarter to end. One quarter has finished. The score is 30-0. to zero. Harden the Cardinals up on the Hannah Eagles 
as Coach Gomez and his team have come out with an early lead tonight. And uh, very, very uh, impressed with the, with the offensive showing here today by the Harlingen Cardinals in the first quarter only. Uh, Brandon Garza, we were talking about that error game. He's been perfect so far on eight throws for 136 yards and and a couple of touchdowns. So uh, they just got to keep this rolling. They just got to keep it going. And you, you, if later in the game, you pull out your starters, you put in your reserves. You got to keep that intensity going, and 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 and, and that's what's going to uh, give you that momentum heading into the playoffs. And most people did expect Harlingen to come out with a victory tonight as they've shown some very impressive things on offense as well as their defense. Their defense has shut them out in the first quarter. They have shut out the Hannah Eagles, and then they also put points on the board. Um, they'll really get eight points on the board on the defense, but one was a safety that, that really wasn't a play that they made. We have three receivers to the right side, one receiver left. Quick pitch, we've seen that a couple of times, but number linebacker does come in ferociously, number 45 of the Hannah Eagles, and that is Jay Ramos. He makes Yellerson Castillo run away. Castillo does give a nice stiff arm and does get the first down. Uh, but almost a great play by the Hannah Eagle defense coming off the backside. Yeah, he got very good penetration on there. But, you know, Yellerson's got that speed that I was talking about. You really can't coach, and we saw that there. Tight for me, tight left, tight two receivers to the left side, one receiver right, one receiver deep right on as he goes into motion. He looks like he it is a fake jet sweep, and he has number 11 downfield running through, but he does dump it off to number 13, who had been streaking across, and the ball does go into number 13, and that is C.J. Gallegos. C.J. Gallegos of the Harmony Cardinals. What did you see on that play, Eladio? Well, I, I saw what you saw. I saw uh, Mark Rosales down the down the field, and I don't, I don't, I, the play kind of happened too quick. I don't think Brandon saw him down there, uh, and he went with his... Uh, with his outlet with a CJ. Three receivers wide right as the ball is on the left hash. Receivers near the numbers on the right side. Two receivers left. Empty backfield. Shotgun formation. Garza does have a lot of time as he rolls right. He's looking deep and he wants to attack deep. He gets around the edge and he's able to run it for about five yards on the play. It's really close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. It looks like it'll be just short of the first down. And what I did see was also that Brandon Garza had a lot of time back there. He's not getting too much penetration. He's getting all the time he wants. There, the secondary had did a good job of curving those orange and receivers, but it left it left uh, this side open for for Brandon to to scramble out there and, and pick up some good yardage. And Garza will not hesitate to run the ball. We saw him run it very effectively last week, and we've seen him take shots here and there. He does like to wait and see what he can do downfield. He does want to throw first, but he is not afraid to run. As he has three receivers left, one receiver right. One receiver coming in motion, play action left side. He hits Vasquez early, but it looks like the Hannah Eagles defense was there, but they will not tackle him down as we see Vasquez makes a nice cut, gaining about six yards. And, and that's been, been the biggest difference uh, in Brandon Garza from last year to this year. He's making those wise decisions. He's a lot smarter. He's more football savvy, and that comes with a year of experience under his belt. You know, he was kind of under pressure under the gun last year following that, that great 2011 team with Randy and, and Kevin and all those guys. So and he handled it well. He handled it very well for for you know for a high school junior. And, and this year he's a senior. He's a leader. He's, he he makes the right decisions and he keeps his team in check down there. Garza is in the backfield, empty backfield, as he has Vasquez and to the right side. He does go deep, trying to hit Davis. Um, the ball is tipped, so it will not be completed. As number 22 of the Hannah Eagles makes a big play there, and that is Stephen Ambris making the big play. As Davis did have some room, the ball needs to be thrown a little bit further, but Garza does not get it there. I think that's his first incompletion of the night. Yeah, it's, it's, his, it's his 11th attempt and his first incompletion, so not, not a bad tilt for him. Great night so far for this offense. As they are finally, But they are finally able to stop one offensive play. It'll be second and ten. He has three receivers to the left, and Vasquez does go to the right side, line up in the slot. He has a receiver coming left. It will be a jet sweep to the right side. Nice cut block by number 30, 23, the running back, and he will get tackled after about an eight-yard gain. And there again, on that jet sweep was uh, Marco Rosales. I'm telling you, man, the, the kid doesn't look big, but he doesn't look big, but he's strong, and he's very hard to bring down. We will say he's strong as he pushes his own offensive lineman and throws him right to the ground. 
on the play as he was aggressively running the ball. Great block right there. I want to shout out to Fidencio um, Gonzalez right there, the running back. Fidencio still in the backfield with Garza. He has two receivers left, one receiver right. Receiver in motion. He play actions. He hits it out over there to Davis. Davis does make a nice play, but he is able to be held on to as the rest of the defense does come make the tackle, but after the first down. We're seeing everybody get their hands on the ball here today, which is good. I, th I think Manny wants everybody to go out there and, ha and have fun and enjoy the game, and but get everybody that experience going into the playoffs. Yeah, you want everyone to, to feel like they're in rhythm right before you head into the playoffs. So very smart by the coach of the Harlem Cardinals, Manny Gomez, as he tries to get everyone in rhythm. Gaza looks to the right side looking at his coaches. They do send Fidencio into the slot as he has three receivers right, one receiver left. Davis, who's been a, a favorite target of him tonight, is left on, on the edge by himself. The ball does go quickly to Gallegos, and he's tackled after a big gain of about nine yards down the middle. Another great catch by CJ. We see the replay right now. He, he had to fight for that to bring it into his body, and he picked up a couple of more yards after the catch. We will not see the replay, but there we saw the two inside receivers go straight up the middle trying to get some room for him, but the Hannah Eagles didn't look like they were that fooled, and so Gallegos on the slant play coming down the middle does make a nice catch, and then he's able to get drugged down after about another two yards. Three receivers left. Gallegos comes in motion, so we have four receivers left. Quick pitch that we've seen tonight. Um, number 33 gets his hand on Fidencio, but Fidencio does escape, and he gets himself the first down after about another six-yard gain for the Harlem Cardinals. On that previous play, you said Hannah wasn't fooled, and they weren't fooled. That just shows the athleticism and the power that, that CJ had to be able to make a play there. And a great play right there by Gallego says he was met quickly in the backfield by number 33, Alex Robles, who we have seen make some nice tackles tonight. But he's not able to drag down Gonzalez for a loss of yards, and so they get the first down. Two receivers left, one, two receivers right, as Vasquez is tight in the slot off the right side. We do have Fidencio Gonzalez, who's been leading this drive on the run. Garza looks, oh, he gets a lot of pressure, and he will be drugged down as number 22 of the Hannah Eagles. That is Steven Ambriz, comes strong off the right, off the right side there, right in Garza's face right away. As Gonzalez does try to get some block on him, but he's not able to block him. Eladio, tell us about what Garza saw on that play. Right, he just saw a lot of number 22 coming right at him. I, the guy just snuck through and, you know, made a play. And that's, you know, good, good. That, that, that shows a lot of uh, heart from the Hanna team. Being down 30-0, about to make it 37 possibly, and show that heart and come out and, and, and drag uh, the quarterback down. Here we see Gallegos does get the ball on the jet sweep, which we've seen them use multiple times tonight. He will gain about seven yards on the play. It'll be third down and 11 as he gets drugged down on the left side. Third and goal on the 11. Here we have, we have two receivers left, two receivers right. Fidencio Gonzalez in the backfield with Garza in the shotgun formation. Garza does come up after looking at his coaches to the right side telling his offensive lineman what to do. He gets the ball snapped. He's looking deep middle. There is some pressure and he has to run out of bounds. He tries to hit Vasquez on the edge, but he is well covered by number 27 of the Hanna Eagles. That is Javier Ochoa on the coverage there. Makes a nice play as the ball is a little overthrown and really there's nowhere for the ball to go. No, and, uh, you know, we've been seeing some pretty good plays here by the Hannah defense. You know, like I said, you know, it shows a little bit of heart to come out here and keep playing hard like this when you're down 30-0, but uh, they're still thinking upset probably. You know, it's only the – it's still uh, midway through the second quarter, and, and if they can just get a couple of things going their way, they, they can make something happen. Well, you know, if they lose tonight, they only have three quarters left in their season, so they want to give it their all and everything they got. The ball is fumbled on the snap. It looks like he hit – himself on the butt on the release on the throw and so it falls right behind the center maybe it slipped out it is a little bit cold so sometimes you do lose a little bit of the friction I did play center when I was in college and so I know that on a little bit cooler days your hands are a little drier and you don't get the same feel that you normally do on the ball so that could have easily happened as um, the ball is fumbled and it does fall right behind the center so it didn't get very far on the snap I tell you what that was a huge stop for Hannah 
I mean, to to be knocking down the door and ready to go up 37-0, uh, you know, that, that was a huge stop for the Hannah Eagles. And let's see if they can build uh, off that momentum onto their offense. Six minutes, 47 seconds as the Hannah Eagles do send out their offense. They have three receivers right, one receiver left in the shotgun formation with their running back number 34 there. He does get the handoff, and he has a nice blocking up in front of him as he gets arm tackle, drug down after about a five-yard gain. Elijah De Leon does make the tackle um, with a couple of other defenders there with him. But we've seen some nice run plays out of number 30, 34, Travis Greener. Tell us about these run plays, Eladio. Well, I mean, it, they're being set up by uh, uh, some pretty good blocking up front for, for Hannah. And like I said, they, that, that's their bread and butter right there. That's what they've been doing all year with a, with a veteran like uh, Coach Madrano on the sideline. You're not going to get away from that. You're going to stick with what brought you here. And there we see it again. Once again, they do pull the same play. This time there is several players on of Harlem Cardinals as they make the tackle for no gain. Um, they had three receivers on the right side, one receiver left. They run out the middle with Grainer once again for no gain. Third down and six yards. What do you think they're going to do here, Eladio? Well, I'd, I'd like to think that they would go to the air, but, you know, you got to be telling them, hey, I'm going to get the ball to your hands. you got to bring it down, and we got to get that first down because if they go three and out here, that big defensive stop is all – it goes for nothing. So you, you, they need to convert. They, gotta, they need to keep this uh, drive going. I think they go to the air. Well, we said he's thrown the ball well tonight. That time he does not throw it as he tries to hit number eight, Carlos Grimaldo, on the play, but it is off target, and the ball goes straight into the ground about two yards in front of the receiver. But it was some good coverage, so he didn't have that much space. But it could have been a better thrown ball. So big stop right here, Harms and Cardinals, as they will give them good field, or should give them good field position here as the ball is being kicked off from the 20. We have number seven of the Harms and Cardinals, Jordan Ramirez, waiting for the punt return. This time the Harms and Cardinals do come after it. And nice bounce for the Hannah Cardinals it will get taken down to about the 39 yard line as Ramirez almost ran up and took it off the ground bouncing but he decides to not go after it and he does let it roll for about another 10 yards we got 5-11 left in the first half Harnjin on their own 39 see what uh I'm sure the offense doesn't like how the last last possession ended so they're going to come out and I wouldn't be surprised if they come out firing on the first drive, look for uh, maybe a Boyd Davis or a Brendan Vasquez down the, the middle of the field. Well, tell us a little bit about what went different that time. It looked like the Eagles were, had some success because they put some pressure. Um, tell us about what they did there. Well, I, I, I think that's what it was. It was just the, 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 the hand of, uh, defense getting – I think the sack set it up, the big sack. And uh, I think the big sack set it up for Hannah, and, and, and they were able to build a little bit of momentum off of that, and, and they're going to try to carry it here into the into the into this position. Yeah, right there we see Fidencio, who has been really their, their main runner tonight, Fidencio Gonzalez, and he takes it on the right side on a quick pitch. But there is a flag on the field. He did get about six yards on the play, but we'll see if it gets brought back. It looks like they're walking back. So holding call against the Harlem Cardinals, and so they will lose about ten yards here. Um, it did look like it was thrown in the backfield, so it is a spot foul, so they may have lost about 11 yards, it looks like. Oh, no, just a clean 10 yards, so first and 20. Well, we saw the big sack that affected the last drive. Now we have a big penalty. A we'll big see. penalty, so we'll see, we'll see how Hannah can take advantage of this. Play action pass. He is getting pressured, and so he's being drug out, but he does have Davis down the middle by himself. Davis does bobble it for a second, but he is able to bring it in. And Davis does get finally tackled at about the 10-yard line. So, Lali, how far of a play was that right there? Uh, we're looking at about, about a 60-yard pass play. And there was a lot of pressure. Great composure by Garza right there as he was being forced to roll out. And he had a defender chasing him down the whole way. Uh, and again, number 45 was putting pressure on him. Just, just a big kid, man. That guy's hard to bring down. You really, you really gotta, you really gotta wrap him up and, and, and drag him down because, uh, you know, a little taps, I'm gonna bring him down. And here we have it on the 10-yard line, first and goal. Harms and Cardinals do have Davis left by himself, two receivers right, 
and they go quickly to Davis. Davis does make one nice cut, but number 11 of the Hannah Eagles is able to keep his hat on him, Armando Isaguirre. He's able to hold on to his ankle. Here we see on the replay, ball goes quickly left to Davis, and Gallegos does dive and then just holds on to him. And that last one, they go for 61 yards. So They've been using Davis a lot tonight, Eladio. How, how much do you think Davis has been able to do against his team? Uh, I'll get you some of his numbers after this play. Pass complete from Garza to Marco Rosales off the right side. Here we see him drop back, and he looks right and throws right. Quick pass as there was some bracket coverage on him, but he does find the gap in the zone and makes the easy completion and reception. The ball is snapped this time and it does go up and it will be good. The Harms and Cardinals take a 37 to 0 lead. Four minutes left to go here in the first quarter. I mean, in the second quarter. Um, Harms and Cardinals showing up strong today so far. Uh, definitely showing up strong. We were talking about Bowie Davis, and he's caught he's caught six balls for over for for close to 100 yards. Close to 100 of of Brandon Garza's 200. And thirty and thirty-four yards passing. So uh, we haven't seen Bowie play this much uh, all year. We haven't seen him this active on the offense. But I, like I said, I think it's a sign of things to come. Not just in the future. Next year, he, he's going to be one of the big guys coming back, one of the top uh, guys on offense, if not the top guy on offense. But uh, it's a sign of things to come in the playoffs. You know, if you want to beat Mikala Memorial next year, if you want to beat guys like Sheridan, you want to compete against those San Antonio schools, you're going to have to uh, involve all your good athletes. And, and, and they're using Bowie here. They're giving him the experience that he hasn't, the, 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 the reps he really hasn't had all year. So it's like, show us what you can do, and let's keep doing it for three, four, five, six more weeks this, this postseason. Number 85, Samuel Bazan does get ready for the kick. The ball is up in the air. It is a long kick as it goes all the way to the back of the end zone, and it will not be returned. Right now, I'd like to give a thank you to Dr. Arturo Cavazos. I think he's only days away from being fully confirmed as he is the final finalist for the superintendent job. And so we'd like to thank him, as well as all of our school board members, for making a night like this possible. Eladio, could you please thank all of our school board members? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, school board president George McShann, vice president Javier De Leon, secretary Greg Powers, and board members, uh, Dr. Nolan Perez, Verna Young, Jerry Fleury, and Dr. Cesar Maldonado. Yes, thank you to them as they give great leadership to our school district. Um, I remember last week as they asked Dr. Cavasso several times who wins last week, and he kept on saying all of Harlem and ISD was going to win because the championship was going through bogus field between the two teams. And that's one of the things I touched on last year. It was a big game, not just because uh, the two teams were good, but, it, but it, it's good for the city. It's good for for the fans, for the community to come together. And a little rivalry never hurt anybody, a little in-house rivalry. So it, it was just a fun experience all around to, to have both teams this competitive. And here we see it. First play of the drive, they were quickly tackled as they did try to run it down the middle. We have three receivers left, one receiver right, Griner on the right side. Lopez is in the shotgun. He's getting some pressure on him. The ball is released, and it is caught by number 12, Martinez, on the play. Great play by Lopez, great throw, as there was some, a lot of pressure on the receiver, but he is able to escape at the end away from power. Here we see Lopez on the replay getting pressured. Ball goes out, completion, and they do get the first down after the end of the drive, after the end of the play, I'm sorry, as he's drug out of bounds there at the end. And, and that, that's what... That's what Hannah receivers have been doing all day. He, he got up, he made the play, and he, and he, and he brought in the catch and, and, and where he was able to convert that first down that they very much need it right now. Here we see the ball. It is a run play, and we see Grainier is quickly met by defender, but he is able to break the first tackle. Should have been a loss of two. Instead, it's a gain of two, and he is tackled down, so it'll be second and eight. 
How many yards does Greener have tonight, Aladu? I got him for 32 yards. 32 yards. 32. It's been a, a tough 32 a yards tough for tough 32 him. yards, yeah. Second and eight. I think both the catches that we've seen tonight did happen by the same receiver, number 12. Number 12, Martinez. So I think here, second and eight, they may be looking to Martinez to make a play right here. He is over by himself on the right side. He has three receivers left. Does Lopez. Greener on the left side as well. He, Greener does step up to block. The ball is thrown. Nice throw right there. Completed by number eight. And that is Carlos Grimaldo. Makes a nice catch. He did have a defender right behind him. But he does box him out. Makes the catch. And then he makes a nice run for about another five yards. Here we see on the replay. As he looks left. Throws it with coverage. Two guys on him. But he... Shows some power there after the play. And we I think we had two catches before that this drive and now we have two catches here on this drive. So two catches, two consecutive first down. So uh you know Hannah Hannah's got something going here. Let's see what we can do from it. We have three receivers to the right side, one receiver left, Greener on the right side of the play, Lopez in shotgun as we've seen him all night. The Harns of Cardinals do show some blitz. As Greiner takes the ball and runs to the right side, met quickly by Medman in the backfield, and Greiner continues to run, but they will call him down as he is not able to be drugged down. Um, but great play there by Bermea meeting him in the backfield and then just holding on because Greiner is a big, strong back that Hannah Eagles have used all night. That looks like a three-yard loss from up here initially. We'll see where they mark it, but, yeah, he is a big guy. and You know, you're going to need a big guy like Gilbert to, to, to drag him down, so... That, that was a good matchup there. And it was nice to see two big, strong guys, and they were almost basically a, a stalemate fight as they were just yeah. there fighting by themselves. Uh, neither one was really able to win, and so the referees just called it down. Two receivers right, two receivers left in the shotgun formation. Grainer does block the outside blitz. It looks like he has a receiver open, hits him on the hand, um, extended hard catch for the receiver as he had to fully extend there, only really got one hand on it. But almost a big play there by the Hannah Eagles. Another great throw by Lopez, just not quite there where the receiver could have gotten it. Just but. slightly overthrown, but I love the play calling. You got to go for it. You got to go for, you know, everybody's thinking first down. You got to go for that touchdown. You got to score right now if you're Hannah, mm -hmm. especially with the, uh, coming down to the end of the, of the half. So, 58 seconds left to go here in the half. We did see a nice throw right now. Let's see if they continue to attack them deep as they have see, seen a little bit of time. He's had time um, so far tonight throwing the ball. Um, typically, we don't see that against this Harnish Cardinals defense. But good blocking once again as he's looking deep. He gets the throw off. Receiver does get up and make the play as does number 15. He loses his helmet after a big hit by number 6, Felix Reina. But big play by Lucas Olivares taking it down. He, here we see on the replay play as they bring it back in shotgun Lopez does take the ball he looks left hits him great catches he has a defender all over him and then he is able to break the tackle on Bermea and then he's finally hit hard and brought down big play right there as it was third and long and then they get a long even longer play right there as they do get into the red zone ball on the 16 yard line as they're trying to get in three receivers left one receiver to the right running back to the right side that was a huge, a huge play for Hannah there to keep the drive alive and, and, and build, get the spirits up a little bit. There we see Martinez tackled hard, but after the completion, as he does get wide open on the one-on-one -on -one coverage, Lopez, Lopez looked like he threw the ball before he was open, has a lot of trust in his receiver. First down, Lopez gets tackled hard and pays for it, but he does make the completion of you. Yeah, and it's uh, Martinez again setting up a first and goal from the five-yard line, so... You know, Hannah, finally for the first time this tonight in position to, to get something going. And unfortunately for them, it's right at the end of the first half, but better now than, than ever. So they're going to see if, uh, if uh, you know, Harnsen's defense, I know, man, he's, it's a little gut check time. So, like, you guys, you guys want to give up that goose egg? You guys want to give up that shutout? So I'm pretty sure we see them down there talking. He's challenging them right now. He goes, we don't want to give up this score right now. So well, this what, could be what, exactly what, also what Medrano needs as he goes into halftime, a quick score, and so he can tell his guys, it's like, hey, we, we, this is still a game. We could still go and put a respectable game out there and maybe even come back because they are getting the ball. They do the get the ball half. to start the second. So a, a, a score here for Hannah would be huge for them. They get the ball, they get a little momentum, and, and maybe make something happen here, make, make a little run. And we have finally seen the receivers for Lopez, um, that is the quarterback, Lopez, He's been throwing some nice balls. Now these balls are actually being completed and being caught. 
And so, really nice job so far tonight. And that's what you had said. It's like, you know, early in the game, there was some incompletion, some three and out drives, but if the receivers had just made those catches like they've been making this drive, the drives would have would have sustained a little longer and, and maybe Hannah would have had some points on the board. Here we see three receivers right, one receiver left, and he looks to the right side. He does have one receiver, oh, almost picked as the number 25 of the Harlington Cardinals almost makes a big play, but he's not able to bring it down. Adrian Vasquez is going to be very upset himself on the play because he almost had the big play that would stop this drive. And so we'll get another shot, second and five yards from the goal line with 20 seconds to go. Both teams each have timeouts left as Harlan Cardinals have all three. The Hannah Eagles have two left. Three receivers right, one receiver left. Running back on the right side. I don't know if they might be setting up for a field goal here, but just my opinion, field goals aren't going to win this game. you got to score a touchdown. you got to get in the end zone. Yeah, I think they may have maybe try to catch them off guard as we've seen them do strong run plays, I mean strong passing plays, and we have seen Brandon with the ability to get a five-yard gain like that. Uh, but that time, the Cardinals are prepared, and they do make the stop. 14 seconds left to go, 37 to 0. But the Hannah Eagles are threatening right now. They got time for one play. You know, they're probably going to pass into the end zone. They don't get it. Bring in the field goal unit, and it's going to the half with some points at least. Yeah, they're, they're, the ball's right in the center. Should be an easy field goal if they are not able to make a completion. Maybe it's an incompletion. Um, but I'd like to see them gamble. If they're not able to get I'd like to see them go for the touchdown. But maybe they want to go into the half having at least scored. At least some points. But, no, you're right. I agree with you. I want, I want to see them gamble. I want to see them get that touchdown because, you know, I mean, you're down 37-0. 37-0, 37-3 doesn't, you know, doesn't make too much of a dent. 37-7 with the ball coming back in the second half. Now we're talking. Same formation. Three receivers right, one receiver left. As he does drop back, he does go to the one-on-one -on -one side. He does have his receiver, and he does make the play. You know, I had been, I've been watching. They did run three receivers right, one receiver left. I thought, when are they going to use that one-on-one -on -one matchup? And here they do. As Lopez looks to the left side, he catch, he sees his guy on the slant. And number 15, Lucas Olivares, who we've seen make a couple of catches on this drive, finishes it off. You know, he's the one that made that long catch, Eladio, that really set up the whole drive. And just look at him. He's a big kid. He, he's got a big body, and he's been using it to his, to his advantage to, to, to make those uh, couple of grabs here in, in this, on this drive. Yeah, every catch that he's made so far tonight, the defender has been behind him, and so he's used that big body to shield off and make those catches. And here he does it once again on the slant play. Touchdown with, seven sec with nine seconds left to go. So the, the score is 37-7. to seven. The Hannah Eagles finally get on the on the on the scoreboard so coach Gomez and his team will go in upset at having given that up with so little time left but great play right there by a great drive sustained there by the Hannah Eagles. Tell us about that drive Eladio. Through eight pass attempts uh, Lopez for Hannah only had 11 yards passing then on this drive he was able to complete uh, let me see uh, f five out of seven passes for almost 80 yards so uh, it's it just a, a question of what we're talking about, just the receivers making those plays, making the catches, and, and we saw the, the w w what the Hannah offense is capable of. I think they might have come in here a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say they were intimidated, but, you know, you're coming into Bogus against Harge and Cardinals, and, it, it, you know, it, it's kind of tough to come in here and, and play uh, against a team like Harge and so. But this touchdown was huge for them. You know, you score, you go to the half, you get the ball in the first half, and then Emmett is going to tell him, like he said, he's a veteran. He's going to tell him, this thing's not over. This thing's not over. But you know who's saying that, too? It's Manny Gomez. He's going to come out, hey, we need to come out with some intensity, man. We just gave up seven points, and the shutout's gone, so. They do squib kick it, and it goes go to the right side as the Harlem Cardinals were playing a very safe defense there against us. Um, he does get around the edge, does number seven of the Harlem Cardinals, Ramirez. And so he does make a very nice return out of it, getting himself to about the 48-yard line. Um, but that will close out the half. And so the Hannah Eagles will go into the locker room down by 30 points. The Harlem Cardinals will go into the locker room up by those 30 points. Eladio, tell us about what happened overall in that first half. Well, 
what I saw mostly was that they had a game plan. Harnsen had a game plan to come out here on offense and involve everybody. You know, I hadn't seen that in a while this year. Uh, last year was very limited to a couple of players, but they came out here ho hoping to involve everybody. They involved everybody. I'm very impressed with the way Bowie Davis played. Very impressed with the way he's been catching the ball, the way he's been running hard. Like I said, hard kid to tackle, man. So you, you really got to wrap him up. They used him. I'm, I'm happy to see that they're using him a little bit more. On defense, it was the same defense as at, at the Harnsen defense we're used to. You know, they're aggressive. And I think we they weren't as aggressive this last drive. They weren't putting that much pressure on the quarterback. He he, he, he kind of he had a little bit more time back there, and, and he was able to pick apart the Harnsen secondary, and uh, and they were able to put some points on the board here going into the into the halftime. Yeah, so great end of the first half for the Hannah Eagles. they got to see if they can continue that in the second half as they were able to put some pressure on the Harnsen Cardinals, stop their offense, and then were able to respond with a touchdown of their own. So we'll see what happens in the second half. Thank you, everyone. Come back. See us in the second half. And we will see you there.